Hello everyone, WolfieCast here with another hero deep dive video where I take a hero and I go through every single upgrade that they have in their upgrade trees and tell you exactly how they work, what they do, and what they don't do as opposed to what the tooltip might say. Because, uh, well, that is a thing, unfortunately. But this time we are here back with Beckett. Now, before we get into it, Beckett, uh, like I said in the basics video for her, she is a full-on damage dealing hero. She is all about the guns, the explosives, the big damage numbers, and her upgrades reflect that pretty much across the board. There are, you know, upgrades for utility here and there, but generally she is all about increasing the damage output. Just as a quick reminder, though, before we get into it, when you guys jump into a game of the Clash mode, you will start at level 1, and at every level you will gain an upgrade that you can put into your abilities from 1 to 10. And you can place those upgrades into your abilities here on either side, and they'll go from Tier 1s to Tier 2s. So you can put these, you can distribute these anywhere that you want to, uh, but at the end of the video I will show you two, I think I'm going to show you two builds for Beckett that I think are personally probably the most optimal, depending on how you want to play her. Let's get started with the left mouse button upgrade, starting with the left side tier one, which is called Clip Service. Machine pistol gains more ammunition. It's very simple. It's exactly what you would expect. Now, granted, with the clip that I have currently, I didn't move from 30 to 42. I do actually have to either empty my clip or change weapons from the launcher back to the pistol. And you can see 42 bullets in the clip. You fire, they count down each time you fire, it goes down by one, and the clip is longer. Very, very simple. And then from there, it upgrades to the tier twos. On the left side, we have close quarters, which buffs damage when you are within 10 meters, dealing 10% increased damage. You see, from this distance, I'm going to do like 10 shots. That was 11, but still, it did a good amount of damage. But if I move closer with this upgrade... And I do the same 10 shots. A little bit more damage. It's not a, it's not an insane damage increase, but it does reward you for being kind of a little bit close quarters. Maybe perhaps if you get jumped by a melee character or two. You're still getting the benefit of uh, increased damage from a somewhat closer range. And 10 meters is pretty big. 10 meters is maybe like about here, I would say. Yeah, it's like it's... It's closer than you think. So you're, you're getting pretty re uh, rewarded pretty easily. All right, and the other tier two on the left path is on the right side. It's called APM. It deals armor ignoring damage, 30% armor ignoring damage with your bullets. Now I will, I will bring up this point now. The tier twos on both paths of the left mouse button, it makes it seem with the bullet points, because the bullet points get under fire weapon, the, it would, make you assume that the damage increases for or these benefits increase for both the pistols and for the cannon that is not the case these these upgrades specifically on the lmb trees will only affect your pistols but as you can see fire some shots that deals about 11 25 now if i get a pm I'm ignoring 30% of Gnosis's armor. And granted, Gnosis only has 15 armor, so this is not a huge increase to the damage overall. But if I do the full clip once again, and we count each one, 1186. It's not a big damage increase for a, uh, a target that only has low armor. But if you saw the Ashland deep dive, there are a lot of cases where characters can be given armor like there's group wide there are group wide upgrades that give armor and there are also a lot of armor upgrades for a fair amount of the frontline damage dealers and even for even for the backline range damage dealers there are some talents that will give armor depending on certain circumstances so this can be useful it's just more of something that you want to keep an eye on depending on what the enemy team is say if they have like margrave um if they got margrave hk ashlyn like those are pretty good targets that you would want to use this tree for let's move back on to the tier one and go to the right side now this upgrade is called sharpshooter miss machine pistols now fire in burst dealing uh, uh five shots per burst uh rapid fire shots and increases your crit build up with these hits now this is something that is also not mentioned uh in this upgrade this also reduces the spread of your bullets and it reduces the recoil of your ammunition so if i go back to the base upgrade 
You can see I've got a bit of recoil, a bit of spread if I'm further away. I mean, Gnosis is very large, so it's hard to really tell. But if I pick up Sharpshooter here, my hits are firing, or my, my shots are firing in bursts of five now. There's little to no recoil at all. And my shots are kind of square right in the middle of my crosshair. Even from the even from the more distant shots. Like, they're pretty accurate. Now, there's another thing on here. For whatever reason, when you hover over this upgrade, that number, that yellow number there that shows the range, increases from 20 to 60. Uh, I'm really not sure why this does this. Maybe, in maybe a long time ago, this also increased the range. Uh, it does not triple the range of this gun. It does not do that, so don't get confused by that. However, it does definitely increase the crit chance buildup. Um, the interesting thing, though, about Beckett is that she already has an insanely high critical hit chance like buildup because she just does so much damage all the time. So this is... I don't really think that's anything that you're going to notice because you're going to you're going to empty one clip and then you're going to fire at something else and you're almost guaranteed 100 percent chance to be critting even before this upgrade like that is kind of how that works. But anyway, let's go to the tier twos uh, on the left side gains 10 percent increased critical hit damage. Now you've already saw that I was doing critical hits. And I'm going to go ahead and try to get crit. There we go. So with the full damage there, about 900. Now if I get this one, it's doing 10% more damage to 967 total. So it's, it's again, it's a very small buff, but it does add up over time, especially if you're very accurate, if you're uh, doing a l very long skirmishes. Uh, <laughs> very long skirmishes, multiple targets, just a very, very long firefight that lasts for like a minute or so, you will notice that damage uh, increasing. Now, granted, for uh, just another quick thing, uh, for those that don't know, critical hit in this game is very strange because you build crit over time. You start at 0% and everyone has their own unique critical hit scaling. It all depends on how much damage you're doing, how uh, how often you're dealing instances of damage. It's it's very strange, and I, I, I will say that I genuinely don't know the entire full mechanics of it but i do know that once you reach a certain point you will get a hundred percent critical hit chance so long as you remain in combat and that dwindles over time depending on how long you're out of combat but uh generally you will always be doing critical hits after about maybe five seconds of fighting it's it's very it's very uh interesting so this is definitely something that rewards you for kind of sticking in fights for those increased uh, increased firefights on both sides where there's just constant back and forth situations. Like, just look how much damage that's doing because I'm just constantly refreshing my crits. So move on to the other side. This, uh, this is an interesting one. On the hits with your backstab, so that means if you're attacking a target from the back, that means that you're doing a 15% extra damage. Now... This is on top of the bonuses that you're already getting from hitting in the back because every character has less armor in the back. It's about it's about half as much armor, uh, depending on the character. It's somewhere between 10 less armor and maybe like half armor, depending on who you're dealing with. I think for lightly armored characters, they have 15 in the front and about 7 or so in the back. And then the heavily armored characters have 25 in the front and maybe 16 or 17 in the back. So it's... It's really hard to know for sure, um, but the point is of, of with this, you're doing more damage from the back. Now, if I go over here to Gnosis, I'm already doing increased damage with a full clip comparatively to the other upgrade that I was doing. It's 940 for that clip. Now, if I do the tactical shooter here, I'm doing technically 15% more damage on top of that. So I believe it was 940 with that full clip. And if I empty this out, 1045. So that's a that's about a hundred damage increase for that full clip just on just on Nasus. And this is gonna you know this is gonna vary depending on if the enemy currently has any armor boosts or uh, if they have just higher armor in the back innately. But uh, it is a good damage output. And generally these these two upgrades will be roughly about the same DPS increase just because 
they work differently. I think generally you would want to go for painfully accurate just because tactical shooter, there are, there are instances where this is going to come in clutch and like, you'll notice that increase, especially if you're trying to finish someone off who's running away. But this is, this is much easier to obtain. I feel like the reward is generally about the same. Let's move on to Beckett's right mouse button upgrades. Starting on the left path, we have the upgrade called Crack Troops. Uh, the grenade will now apply a Cracked Armor debuff, which is 10 armor reduction and 10 damage per second for 3 seconds. Uh, and this affects everyone that is in the explosion. So, throw the grenade, wait for the delay, it explodes, applies Cracked Armor. So pretty good upgrade and very low investment because it's a tier 1. It just, generally this is something that you could pick up and you could, you could keep that on that upgrade for basically forever. Uh, but let's go to the tier twos on the left side. Starting on the left, we're going to go with the frag grenade. Uh, increases the explosion radius by one meter. So that's not a huge uh, increase, maybe about 20% increase overall. Uh, but in the normal grenade, you kind of see that ring. You can sort of see the ring uh, at his feet. It's, it's, it's a pretty small ring, all things considered. Uh, but that is the that is the effective radius. And if you take the frag grenade, I throw it again. You see that ring is a bit bigger. Now the <laughs> the animation for the increased frag uh, the increased grenade size looks like it's way bigger. Um, it's generally not that much bigger, but it's still really good. I think this is a I think this is something that you would probably get last honestly because it's it's just a small increase but it's still good of course you know and and you're if you reach level 10 or level 8 or 9 you're, you're wanting to put it put a point somewhere but anyway let's go to the right side now uh called smart grenade a smart grenade uh basically allows it so that if you do a direct hit it'll deal increased damage uh, an increased 100 flat damage and it'll also push the enemy away uh and this is another instance of something that says that it interrupts it does not interrupt, it just pushes them away. The only thing this would interrupt is something if they are required to stand still. So like channeling power, that would interrupt. But it does not apply the interrupt condition. But it looks like this. If I throw the grenade, hit Nasus immediately, does increased damage, and then of course that is stacking with the uh, armor crack benefit from the tier 1. Now this, uh, this does sort of imply with the wording that it pushes enemies... It does not it push multiple targets. It does not matter if uh, if everyone's kind of clustered together. The only one that's actually going to get pushed is the person that you hit directly with the grenade. And you do have to hit them directly. Like if I throw it now and I actually don't hit Nasus, it exposes his feet. He still takes the damage, of course, but he doesn't get pushed because you have to hit it directly. And it also didn't do the increased damage. Uh, but don't get confused by the wording here. It will only push one enemy that gets hit by it. Not everyone that's nearby. Everyone nearby will still get the armor crack, but they will not take the increased damage. They will not get pushed. Let's go back to the right side now of the RMB. The first upgrade to tier one is called tear gas. It changes your grenade to a bouncing grenade that bounces up to three times. On bounce, it creates a poison cloud that lasts for three seconds. Poisons enemies, of course, which reduces their healing input by 50% and deals 21 damage per second for three seconds. Now, this is a this is another instance where uh, for some reason there's not uh, something shown here. This also decreases the impact damage of the grenade by about half after kind of throwing some off camera. But normally you throw the grenade, deals 276 damage. I pick up the tear gas upgrade and I'll wait for the cooldown to come back. You will see that the impact damage is less, but the damage does ramp up over time, of course, because of the poison debuff. And this is one of those instances of, of Beckett having some utility in her upgrades. Very few and far between, but this can be useful depending on what you're dealing with. But you can see that deal with 162. And then the damage per second eventually increases to 267, which is actually a little bit higher than normal. But that is also implying that Nasa stayed in one of those pools the entire time. And this is this is weird because generally you want to kind of have the grenade be as close to the target as possible when you throw it. With this upgrade, you don't really want to impact them directly with it because then it kind of just bounces immediately to the floor and then it doesn't travel very far. 
and you know you could you could uh, aim this to the point where they would still be in the explosion radius, but it would still travel further and beyond and affect a much larger space, which that with that poison debuff, because that's kind of what you're trying to do. You're trying to get uh, with this upgrade. You're trying to get as many enemies in the pools as possible. But if I throw it there, and you see it bounces down there and creates pools way further away, and that affected you know Gnosis and the Motiga there. So it's it's kind of changes how you want to throw the grenade and approach because you still want them to take some impact damage, of course. Uh, but the pools also create that zone off potential uh, where the majority of the utility comes from the fact that you're doing multiple targets getting less healing by using this upgrade. But anyway, let's go to tier two, uh, tier twos now. Lingering fumes increases the poison cloud duration to six seconds, which is double the duration. So normally it was three seconds, now to six seconds. If I throw the grenade one more time, you can see the area, you know, lingers there for much, much longer. Which will mean if they stay in the pool there, if they get kind of CC'd or they're just kind of stuck in a corner, then that damage is going to do even more because it's lasting forever. And full ticks with this upgrade, that's about somewhere between eight or nine ticks if they stay in the space the entire time. Uh, you know, refreshing and then the lingering effect uh, even after they exit the pool. So it's a pretty significant uh, damage increase if they happen to stay in there. Um, but again, more about the utility of reducing their healing. The other side of the tier two on the right side, we have exhaust fumes. If you use your jet pack, you reduce the cooldown of grenade by 10 seconds. It's a 10 second flat reduction for using the jet pack, which means you can kind of chain together your uh, effective poison grenades. Now, this is a high investment upgrade. I do believe that there are upgrades that are probably better suited that you want to prioritize. However, if you have an enemy team with like two or even three sources of healing that are just constantly healing themselves, this could be something that you might want to consider. But if I show it here, throw the grenade, and then I use my jetpack, you see that cooldown was reduced significantly, and then I can throw it again. So very... Very, uh, very handy for those situations where you just constantly need to apply the poison debuff, which is, you know, it's it's useful. But I don't think this is I don't think this is something that you're really going to be like, oh, I definitely need to get this. But it's it's there if you find those situations. Let's move on to the upgrades on Beckett's Q now, starting with the left side, as always. First one is called Rocket Booster increases the cannons projectile speed and range. So it makes it increase from 30 meters to 50 meters and the projectile increases uh, it, it looks to me like it's double i don't think it's quite double speed but it definitely is noticeably faster especially when you fire from much further away but normally those three shots small delay before they impact and then with the rocket booster it is faster and you you'll notice that it's it's when, when something is further away, you will notice, and this kind of helps, you know, with situations where something is really far away. I think the shots without the upgrade, I don't think they would even reach that creature over there. But you do still have to aim. Uh, you do still have to kind of consider. And this is... I can't, I can, can't, you know, fully show you how long this increase is. Because I think even from here, I can still hit Gnosis. Yeah, look at this. Look how long that is. If I take the upgrade back, don't hit him at all. But with the upgrade, I definitely do. And there's there's a bit of delay, but it's it's still like that's such a huge increase. And this this upgrade is strange as well, because you you do have a little bit of damage fall off with how far they travel. Like that base did 187, but from here, 199. So like there is a bit of damage fall off if you're super far away. This is more about the. It's more about the fact that they travel faster. Like this helps kind of not having to uh, lead your shots as much. But anyway, we're going to move on to tier two with arming time. Now this uh, this makes up for what I just said about the damage fall off potential. Uh, if you are at 25 meters or longer, the damage is increased by 15%. It's, it does say up to 15%. I haven't fully tested if this is like a scaling thing where it may start as low as like 5% and then if you're further even further away it goes up to 15% uh, but if I'm far away maybe about here 199 and then I pick up arming time 224 
And then from here, I think it did like 180 something with the initial shot and then 229. So like it kind of makes up for that. It kind of makes up for that damage fall off potential. Um, it's just I don't know this this side of the tree is very strange to me because it makes you want to play more like like a sniper. <laughs> but Beckett's other weapon is such short range that it kind of just doesn't really make sense to me. But uh, if this suits your play style and you want to do this, I mean, this is here. I don't think this is super worth it just because the the fact that it has travel time. Yeah, the bullets are faster. They do do a lot of damage. But uh, I just I don't know. I'd prefer just kind of being point blank if I needed to. But let's move on to the other side. This is a this is a much cooler upgrade, I think, in my opinion. Uh, after reloading, increases the next cannon damage. So your first shot with your reloaded shots will deal a flat 100, per, uh, 100 increased damage. I almost said 100%. It's not the case. But a flat 100 bonus damage on the first hit. Now, this is not just on reloads. This is when you... This is when you actually like change your weapon as well so if i go from the pistols empty out my clip or just like at some point change deals bonus damage immediately i like, granted this is crit so it's a little hard to show but the the base damage on the shots it is a it's a flat damage increase and you really have to you know it, it really rewards you for aiming uh the very first shot of your clip you definitely want to hit the first uh, shot if at all possible but you see the 199 there and the other one did like 287 or something it's pretty good it's a I, I like this upgrade a lot the other side of the q upgrade tree we have flame cannon uh which applies a burn on the cannon that uh, on the target that you hit the burn does 20 damage per second lasts for three seconds however this does reduce the uh range of the uh cannon itself by about 33 percent so it starts normally at 30 goes down to 20 and 20 is about the same distance as your machine pistols so this is actually this is probably one of my more favorite upgrades it's very low investment and is actually a pretty good damage uh increase but you see fire the bullet and the the bullet changes too which i think is pretty cool but as you can see each shot will apply that burn about two seconds worth and you can keep firing like this will refresh the burn because it does do a tick of burn basically instantly and then you just keep firing that'll refresh the burn and it it's definitely a big damage increase just like the full power increase here 665 682 and then without the upgrade i'm gonna give him i'm gonna let him get some health back so i don't kill him accidentally without the upgrade somewhere around somewhere around 600 it's it's definitely a noticeable increase, which is the point of saying this. And it's low investment. It's it's very nice extra damage output. It's very free because you're gonna because you know remember when I said in the base of it, you're gonna be alternating between your machine pistols and your cannon every single time. So you know you just fire your cannons, then you switch over. You're still doing extra damage because he's burning for another like two seconds. Then you switch back over, you fire again. It just it's so good. Now onto the tier twos of the right path, starting on the left side called Afterburner. The cannon shots now pierce through enemies. Now this is a really cool upgrade because your cannons are applying burn and they now pierce, which means that you can possibly apply that burn to a bunch of people all at once if they kind of in a kind of in a loose line. See if I fire through here, it's kind of kind of going straight through and applying that same damage and impact damage to the Motiga down there. So this is uh, this is a really cool upgrade in my opinion. You're you know, this is something you could put in early if they happen to be like teaming. If if the team happens to group up all together pretty often, you'll notice that this is doing increased damage uh, overall to the entire enemy team. Now on the other side, the a pretty similar upgrade uh, called blast radius on impact. The shots now explode, so they will affect a radius around the impact target. And it's a, it's it looks like it's a pretty big space, but after after using this for a while, kind of using this in the play test, the the effective radius they kind of have to be touching each other for this to really be utilized. I also don't think that this applies. I, I also don't think that this applies the damage, uh, the burn damage, because the projectile is not actually hitting the enemy. It's like even even there, even there, it didn't look like it. And also, this doesn't actually have to hit the target. This is something that can, you know, 
it can just do an explosion after. But as you can see, I'm not hitting the enemy with the projectile. So it's not applying that burn. It's also doing slightly less damage because of the fact that you're not actually hitting with the projectile. So it's it's a little less damage overall, in my honest opinion. But it's, I mean, it's a cool animation. I'll give it that. Um, but I do think Afterburner is generally better if you're going to go this path, which I I think you should because it caters more to the, it, it caters more closer to the, you know, utilizing the machine pistol, constantly swapping your weapon. Now to the jetpack upgrades on her E. Starting on the left side, uh, fuel capacity increases the fly duration to six seconds. So the fly duration normally is four seconds, increases two, uh, two seconds to a maximum six seconds. So you can, you can just use that right here. Uh, the cooldown of the ability goes on, like the ability starts its cooldown immediately after you use it. So you can kind of count as you're using it. One, two, three, four, five, six it, like it's it's a noticeable increase because you know that's a that's like a 33 percent increase to the duration it's a pretty cool upgrade it's it's low investment it lets you just kind of get away faster um more frequently can be able to get out of the air out of reach of melee attackers so this is this is a cool upgrade i like this one uh but on to tier two on the left side up and away increases the jump amount by one. So normally you use your jetpack and you kind of get boosted and then you can jump one more time in midair. This allows you to jump twice while in midair. So if there are ledges that you just need to get, if there are ledges that are like really high, you just need to get up to, um, or perhaps you just need to be in the air longer, maybe get out of range of some like mid range, like low to mid range attacks. This could be useful for that. Um, this is what it looks like. You jump, then you can jump. You can jump again, and then you know if you come back down, jump, jump, jump. It's you, you get pretty high, uh, but uh, it's pretty neat. Uh, I think a better upgrade is on the right side here, jet powered. Uh, while you're flying, while you're flying, you increase the damage of your weapons. So you have your fire weapon damage is increased by fifteen percent while you are using your jetpack. And this will apply to the uh, this will apply to the machine pistols and to the cannon. So if you if you uh, well, actually, I can just show this because if I'm not flying. So if I do a clip here, 775, and then each shot of the cannon, 199. Now, if I am flying, 732, and then I'm going to wait for the cooldown to come back. Just kind of seeing this here. And then I will fly again in just a moment. There we go. 229. So it's it's not a crazy damage output, but if you're going to be flying and, and you know, skirmishing in, in the fights, you will want to utilize this. I think this is probably the better upgrade on the entirety of, of the uh, jetpack tree. And these, you know, you, you'll notice as I've gone through these, there are a lot of upgrades that just increase raw damage, whether it's a percentage or by a base amount. And all those will stack together, you know, like if you get 15 here, 10 there, 15 here, you know, that's what that's 40% increased damage like that all stacks cumulatively, uh, cumulatively. So it's 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 pretty significant for these random bursts where you're just suddenly doing a ton more damage. Now to the right side of the jetpack tree, we have rocket pack. If you use uh, your sprint and you hit E, uh, you actually start your flight with a dash that moves you a significant distance uh, before you kind of start your normal flying. This is what it looks like. Oop. I'm hitting jump, not E. There we go. See, you get that you get that big rocket boost and you kind of you kind of fly a, a pretty long distance. Uh, this is a really good upgrade if you just happen to have an enemy team that has maybe a lot of assassins or a lot of melee. You can get yourself very, very quickly out of that tough situation. Now, it doesn't increase the cooldown. It doesn't reduce the cooldown of the jetpack. So this is, you know, again, a good upgrade specifically to counter those melee comps. If we move on to the tier twos, we have on the left side here, ignition switch, which if you do the sprint dash, you create a trail of fire behind you that lasts for two seconds. And uh, it'll, deal, it'll deal 50 damage per second uh, for one second for enemies that are standing in the space. This is what it looks like. This is, I don't think this is really a needed upgrade, but it does look super cool because it just kind of leaves this trail of fire behind you. Kind of, you know, if a bunch of people jump at once, then you're 
doing a little bit of damage to them as you leave. Uh, but this is, it's really meh in my honest opinion. It's, it's okay. Like it looks really cool. But uh, the fact that the it doesn't give the jetpack like any innate damage for being point blank. It's just 50 burn per second, and which is really not great. Like 100 damage at most, even if they stand in it for the entire time. Uh, but the other side, Blast Away, uh, pushes enemies away that are near you whenever you uh, whenever you start. And it it's pushes enemies 10 away. I think that this push should say 10 meters away because this is a pretty significant push. So if I'm here at Gnosis and I do that, that push is actually like really big and that'll push everybody. So like th this is a this is really good for scattering like a bunch of people that are near you. Or you can use this, you know, if you if you get jumped near a cliff and then you if, if you're if you're next to a ledge and then you get flanked and then you shift over and then rocket check uh, rocket pack away, you could probably like cliff them off and get a kill that way. So it's it's pretty uh it's pretty neat. I don't think this is worth like a super high investment because the the tier one on its own is really good uh, just to counter like those really tough situations where you absolutely need to get somewhere, whether you need to get somewhere quickly or you need to get away from somebody super fast. Uh, just keep in mind that you're getting rid of the damage potential on the other side of the tree, which I I, I don't know. It's all it all depends on how you want to play and, and what the enemy team is, because, of course, every Every upgrade tree for every character should be catered to what is happening on the enemy team. You're trying to react to the potential of high armor. You're trying to react to the fact that there may be more melee versus ranged. You know, it really entirely depends. Finally, for ability upgrades, let's go to the focus. Uh, starting on the left side, we have precision. Buffs crit chance buildup by 25%. Uh, and this is this is a strange upgrade to me just because of the fact that I've, I've already said this multiple times by now. Beckett has a huge critical hit chance build up already because of the fact that she just constantly does damage at all times. Um, so this is a this is an upgrade that you won't really notice super well just because, you know, you're already basically at full crit by the time that you're through a clip like whether you had this upgrade or not, you're basically at 100 percent critical hit chance after just unleashing one instance of your of your machine, uh, machine pistol uh clip but uh to the tier twos this is a this is an upgrade that is very cool uh to me it kind of kind of goes in line with uh whatever was on the sharpshooter i think it was sharpshooter yeah uh on back step deals more damage basically the same exact thing uh but without having to invest into the lmb upgrade you also get 10 percent damage reduction on the back so uh, damage reduction is not quite the same as armor. We have discovered recently that damage reduction is calculated after armor. So this is a this is a pretty neat uh, upgrade on its own, just because it kind of helps you survive a little better if you get flanked. Uh, but you are doing as more damage as well, kind of picking off enemies that are running away, or if you're flanking on one side of them and you're hitting them in the back, you know you're just doing more damage. So this is this is this is really uh, helpful for that. And then on guard, uh, you might have remembered this upgrade on Ashland's trees. On guard, on guard, well, so long as you're attacking, you have front damage reduction. 20% front damage reduction so long as you're doing some sort of attack animation. Um, and for Beckett, uh, this would include, I believe this would include changing weapons, uh, firing your gun, obviously, uh, throwing your grenade or in the process of throwing your grenade, as well as the animation for your focus. This would not trigger uh, while you're using your jetpack because the jetpack on its own is not considered an attacking animation. Uh, but otherwise, you're doing, you're getting 20% uh, frontal damage reduction. And I'll show that here. Uh, if I normally get hit by this Motika, impact damage is 85, and then 42 on the ticking. Now, 42, uh, the, the, the damage of, of debuffs will be reduced by your armor, not by damage reduction. So if I'm firing, that impact gets reduced to 68, but I'm still taking 42 damage per second because debuff ar debuff uh, damage is de entirely dependent on armor. It's not affected by frontal damage reduction. Now onto the right side of the focus tree. First upgrade tier one is called Will to Power, which is another upgrade I believe Ashlyn had. Uh, gain 10% damage reduction and 10 frontal damage reduction, or sorry, 10% damage and 10 frontal damage reduction until death. Uh, this is an upgrade that will 
only take effect after you use focus. And it's a permanent buff until you get killed. So, norm, you know, you see it. This, what is happening? I have my, my pistol's very big. I, that was weird. Anyway, um, you notice that you're not getting, you know, any sort of damage debuff or increase right now. What is happening with my, the, I've never seen this, uh, this bug before. This is really funny. Anyway, um, you'll see I'm not getting that damage bonus right now, but if I use my focus, you'll see the floating text will show that I have damage reduction, I got more damage, and my hands are now glowing, so it's showing kind of that I have that buff going on at all times, and that will stay on until you get killed. So it's 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 pretty neat. Um, I think this is something that is kind of a... It, I think, in my honest opinion, this is something that you could invest very early Uh for for your talents just because Beckett generates focus so fast you're going to be using it constantly so even even if you do get punished and die like this is so easy to regain and the fact that it includes increased damage and damage reduction is is like a huge bonus but uh tier twos uh increases critical kit chance and it will restore 100 stamina on use now this is a this is an interesting upgrade because the wording, the wording really implies uh, that, as the wording would imply to some people, maybe that when you use the focus, you have a hundred percent crit chance until you either get killed or perhaps you have a hundred percent crit chance like at all times. It's not technically the case. Essentially, what this upgrade does for the crit chance is if you were if you were, say, at zero crit chance, or perhaps you were not at crit uh, chance capacity yet, this would instantly boost your current crit chance to from wherever it is to 100. That's where it would go. And it would still it would still dwindle uh, depending on how long you're out of combat or if you stop hitting things. It doesn't keep your it doesn't keep your crit at 100 percent all the time. Uh, as for the stamina, it does work uh, if you're, you know. If you're constantly running around, dodging, jumping, whatever, you're at zero. Uh, you're at zero stamina. You can use your focus. It would restore 100 stamina back to full. But just to show that real fast, if I get myself in combat, start hopping and dodging and get low, and I use my focus, you see it increases it to 100 right away. And the 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 crit chance is weird because I I need to really make a whole video on critical hit chance because it's. It's a very fascinating, like, it's a very fascinating mechanic in the game. It just, it, it's really hard to explain rapidly. Uh, but as you can see, I'm kind of, you know, I, I got that floating text that said I have increased crit chance. You saw that my stamina bar refilled to 100. So that's, that's what the upgrade does. On the other side, we have the upgrade called Refocus, which increases your focus gain by 15%. And then after you increase your uh, after you use your focus, that focus gain increases to 25 percent. I for a long time, we were asking kind of behind the scenes, is this a is this a stacking increase? It is not. It does not increase your focus gain to 40 percent. It starts at 15. Then after you use your focus, it is a 25 percent increase. Now, granted, Beckett. Beckett gains focus so fast that you're really not going to notice this. You're, you're not going to notice how much more that you're getting your focus just with this upgrade because you're, you just already farm it so quickly. But I, I'm very confident that it does work. Uh, it does increase it. And you're just, you're honestly just going to be using focus so often with this upgrade. You see, I already got it back and I, just I feel like I just used it. I can put it over there. You fire him. Go over here. Fire my stuff. Throw a grenade. I Beckett just so much damage. It's she's insane. All right, and lastly we will go over clash talents. Now just like uh just like every character, you will have a clash talent. If, uh you can pick one out of three. Uh, you'll have a upgrade for right mouse button. You have an upgrade for your Q, and you have an upgrade for your E. So Beckett's upgrade starting on the top here. We have Grenadier reduces the grenade's cooldown by two seconds. And then after clash reduces the grenade's cooldown uh, by e even further by an additional two seconds. So normally grenade has a 15 second cooldown. 
with this class talent, you will get it to 13. And then after class starts, it'll be reduced to 11. So this is a, this is a pretty good upgrade. If you need to, you know, if you're really good with your grenade, if you need to constantly use it for whatever reason, whether you've gotten the poison side or the crack troop side for the armor reduction, I think this is a pretty good upgrade. Um, but then we'll go down to here to the second one, the second talent, which is called ungunned, outgunned, I'm sorry. Uh, when you swap your weapon, you gain a 7% basic attack damage increase for three seconds. And then after clash swapping weapon, that damage is effectively doubled to 15% for three seconds instead. So this is probably the go to upgrade because of the fact that you're I've said this before, you're going to be constantly swapping back and forth between your two weapons like that is the most effective damage per second output. It's the best way to play her because you're utilizing upgrades across the board after you get like higher levels. This is this is probably the upgrade that everyone will generally like default to because it's it's basically a permanent increase because you're going to be you're going to be you're going to be switching weapons after you empty your clip. And it doesn't take that long to actually uh, get rid of your clip. Uh, but this is what it looks like. If I empty out my clip here. And I swap, you see the floating text, I get a damage boost. And then I swap again, I get that damage boost. Like, it's just, it's constant. Switch, damage boost. Like, it just, it's basically a permanent damage increase. And I just realized I didn't show you the Grenadier upgrade. So normally 15 seconds, throw the grenade, 13 seconds. That's it. That's it. That's, it's pretty simple. It's a pretty good upgrade uh, for the uh, grenade use if you need to do that. But I uh, outgunned the default one for sure. And finally, we have ready to jet. Uh, using your jetpack restores 25 stamina. And while flying, you have double focus gain. Now, this is a good upgrade, too. I think Beckett's one of the few that has actually good upgrades across the board. I just think one really stands out above the others. Uh, but this is if if you need to use your jetpack like pretty often or, you know, if you find yourself low on stamina and you really need to run away really quickly, uh, this is a good upgrade to have for those situations. And then the focus gain, the focus gain is good as well. Like you will definitely notice a, <laughs> you'll definitely notice double focus gain. Um, but again, she already has crazy focus buildup anyway. Um, I don't think that this is like super useful because, because, you know, in reality, you're going to be flying for four seconds and it only includes while you're flying. It doesn't include when the jetpack is on. You have to be airborne to get that clash benefit of, of the double focus gain. And, you know, those... Those instances where you're getting increased focus, you're not really going to notice in the long run because the cooldown is pretty high, like 20 seconds. What is this? A, it's a 20% uptime of getting 20%, 100% focus gain. So I I don't know. This is this is OK. I think the stamina on its own is pretty significant. Like if you really need the stamina uh, for this, this could be a really good like fallback ability for those that are kind of learning Beckett and kind of learning stamina management. Uh, but Outgunned, I think, is the best choice for sure. And just to show that the uh, ready to jet upgrade works, kind of get over here, do some dodges, use it. See that stamina kind of refills very, very immediately. So it does work. It's neat. But now with all the upgrades out of the way, I'm going to show you two builds that I think will be very good for uh, Beckett players, whether you've used her for a long time, whether you're learning her. Uh, this is going to be kind of the the best priority upgrades for her uh starting with the first build that i'm just going to call the well-rounded beckett build uh kind of the your the build is more revolving around like constantly being in combat and just doing tons of damage at all times i think this is probably one of the default uh paths for her so at level one i'm going to pick up crack troops crack troops gives me the uh cracked armor and just gives me a just gives me a constant like damage increase immediately like three second a three second window of dealing 10 percent more damage is pretty significant especially if you can get it on multiple people and it helps the team also do more damage for those early skirmishes then from there i'm going to get clip service to get more ammunition and then after that i go flame cannon i think the flame cannon is actually a really good upgrade because again you're just you're just constantly applying damage again and again and again uh and you know, these three upgrades alone will just have it so that, you know, regardless of the situation, you're going to be doing a ton of damage. Like these are the def the three defaults. I just I think so long as you have crack armor or the sorry, the uh, 
whatever the left side grenade upgrade was. I can't remember. Crack troops. Um, as long as you have that, I think that you're pretty set. Now, from here, this is where you start thinking what the enemy team has. Um, if you have a lot of enemies that have high armor, or if you have enemies that are uh, applying armor to their allies, like global armor, uh, group-wide armor, uh, you can consider APM next. I think generally, though, most people are going to go with close quarters because of the fact that Beckett is... Beckett's like a pretty medium, medium long range character. Uh, but if you're going to have those instances where you're going to be fighting uh, a lot of enemies, pretty close quarters, uh, <laughs> quite literally, a uh, bunch of melees like Margrave or maybe uh, Gnosis or Trip, Taito, uh, all these ca melee characters or even the medium range characters, uh, maybe like Griselma, um, you'll you'll find that this is going to be pretty useful overall um and it's a very it's a very simple investment that you can put in and get just constantly increased damage pretty much for free so that's what i would do uh alternatively if you really find yourself in sticky situations constantly you can invest in the low uh kind of the low investment for the right side of the uh rocket tree not rocket tree jetpack tree for rocket uh, rocket pack if you need to, you know, constantly get away from flankers, like if there's a trip that's constantly dying you, a, a woo that pulls you, uh, a margrave that leans in and stuns you, and then there's a bunch of melee enemies coming in immediately, like this is a good low investment upgrade. Um, but if that is not the case, this would be level four. And then from here, I honestly would get will to power at level five. Because again, I, 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 I'm a broken record at this point, but generally, genuinely, Beckett builds her focus so fast, you're going to be using this often. And even if, even if you do die and you and you lose the benefits, you're going to gain your focus so quickly to the point where it just like it doesn't really matter. Now, this this side is interesting, but I think I think the problem with the left side path is that it it's not it's not good at tier one. You kind of want to uh, get a lot of benefits with tier ones if you can, uh, especially at earlier levels, just because. Just because if you get like level five, again, I, I um, the games don't really last super long in this game. It really depends on the matchups. It depends on how well the teams are. Uh, but generally, most games are going to end by around everyone by by everyone being around level seven or eight, maybe higher. But like you want to get your early upgrades in as often uh, as possible. And will to power low investment tier one that you can just use right away. And from here, I mean. I think refocus is really good, um, but at this point, maybe consider like uh, afterburner. If you got a bunch of enemies that are grouping together, um, and you could probably do this at level five as well. If you don't want to, uh, if you don't want to get uh, will to power right away, but uh, definitely afterburner would be really good here. And then from there, uh, from here, probably get something like fuel capacity into jet powered. And then I would do refocus and then maybe frag grenade. You could probably do either one of these. I think the frag grenade is better just because it it ensures that you're getting that that uh, team-wide armor crack benefit. And of course, at level five, you're going to pick outgun because that's just the best talent that she has. But this is this build is like really good at just constantly doing a bunch of damage. You know, you're going to be... You're going to be flying for a long period of time against the melee enemies that are going to come after you. Um, you'll be doing like a constant array of, of debuffs with the burning. You know, swapping, swapping your weapons, you're getting damage boost. You're getting a damage boost from flying. You have a damage boost from using your focus. You're technically getting a, a roundabout damage boost from cracking armor. It's just, it's so, you're getting a damage boost from being, you know, near people. Like, you're, this damage increase is insane. Just on its own and this is this is going to be like a constant just burn enemies as often as possible sort of situation you're just doing so much damage with this for the tldr version uh for that build level one crack troops level two clip service level three flame cannon now level four is probably going to be more often close quarters but apm is also really good uh depending on if they have high armor but i'm going to go close quarters for the sake of this Level five, you're going to get Afterburner, or you can get Will to Power. Either is fine, but we'll do Afterburner. Level five, you're also going to get your talent for Outgunned. Then we're going to get Will to Power. Uh, then we're going to get uh, Fuel Capacity, Jet Powered. 
then refocus, and then level 10 is going to be frag grenade. Now the other build is a little more interesting. Uh, <laughs> it's it's very strange, but I'm going to be calling it the burst Beckett build, where you're essentially going to be wanting to do as much damage as possible immediately. So this uh, this is level one investment fully into uh, Q for the left side and then into fully loaded for that extra 100 damage burst on your first shot with the uh, with the cannon. And then from there, you want to get crack troops and smart grenade, which is basically the same exact thing, but with the grenade. So if you do a direct hit with the grenade and then you hit with the you hit with the cannon on the first shot, you're basically doing. I mean, honestly, you're doing around 700 or more damage instantly, and you're also cracking their armor, uh, which means from that point on, uh, this will be level five. You want to go into sharpshooter and then painfully accurate. So this is kind of be the 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 combo here. The idea basically is that you want to throw your grenade and then fire your first shot immediately with your cannon. And then you fire your other two cannon shots. And then by that point, hopefully you have a hundred, you have a, a increased your critical hit gain to a hundred percent. You switch over to your pistols and you just start shooting. You just shoot with the, uh, with the constant, like a uh, burst attacks. And then you, you are doing more damage as they're running away. You're doing more damage because you're critting. It's, it's crazy. Uh, and then from there, honestly, a lot of these don't, matter that much uh for the sake of this the fact that you're working on getting crits as often as possible i would say precision is pretty good uh level five as well this is a there's an argument for getting grenadier or outgunned for this but i still think outgunned is the best benefit just because uh it's a constant damage boost. i mean honestly how how much do you really want from that um and then again fuel capacity and jet powered and you can you can Get those upgrades first if you want to uh, not get the 25% uh, crit buildup. And then from there, probably tactical awareness because this is a flat damage increase for the enemies that are running away. And this is this build is very much about, you know, running in, doing as much damage as possible in the shortest amount of time. And I'm, I'm going to try not to butcher this. All right, I practiced this a few times off camera to kind of show it as best as I can. Uh, but the idea is you want to start in your pistol mode and then you want to jetpack switch weapons and throw your grenade basically all at the same time and then from there you fire your three cannons you switch back to pistols and then you finish out the rest of the damage output but this is this is what it looks like and i i'm gonna try to do this in one take you jetpack switch grenade and hit at once and then you're going to be constantly flying because the damage boost only increases as you're, you know, jetpacking in the air. Just see look how much damage that did. And if, you know, you jump in and that's not even that's not even, you know, throwing in the uh, tactical awareness upgrades. Like if they're turning around or running away, uh, if I'm hitting from the back, like that's it's a huge damage increase. Uh, it's a huge burst of damage in a very short amount of time. So this build kind of plays more like an assassin. Um it does work very well. I think that the other build is generally just more well-rounded uh, for all gameplays and kind of suits better for, you know, countering the team. This is a, this is a very high investment build that does work, um, but it's not super flexible. All right. And the TLDR for build number two uh, is going to be level one, rocket booster. Level two, fully loaded. Level three is crack troops. Level four is smart grenade. Level five, uh, sharpshooter. Level six, painfully accurate. Level seven, you can get precision or you can go to the uh, jetpack upgrades, but I'm going to do precision for this case. Fuel capacity, jet powered. Of course, level five, you will get outgunned. And then level 10 is going to be tactical awareness. And that is the uh, super burst Beckett build. And that is, uh, that is the deep dive for Beckett. I will say uh, one more quick thing about the grenade upgrades. You can consider taking the tear gas upgrade if there is not another source of poison on your team. Um, but generally, it's generally the poison is not going to be super helpful for uh, for Beckett unless you are the only source again. Like I said, um, and maybe if there's like a maybe if there's a Vadasi or a Sven on the enemy team, and there's 
generally probably going to be a Sven every time because he's just a really good character. Um, but if you if you find yourself able to land the uh, tear gas poison grenade very often, it's pretty good to use. I would say you could probably pick it up around level three or four if you really need to get it because uh, those levels come up pretty early. You could probably pick it up at level two if you really, really wanted to. You just kind of have to keep in mind prioritizing what you're giving up for the sake of that uh, upgrade. And then I would say the tier twos for the poison grenade, probably low investment, something I would probably put in really late, maybe around level nine maybe ten because i don't think that either of them are really super significant the uh the increased duration is okay but uh overall i think it's a low investment pretty high impact upgrade just on tear gas but uh, if you guys enjoyed watching thank you for watching first of all um this is a deep dive for beckett and i'm gen honestly i'm not super great at beckett so hopefully when you guys use this uh you guys will be better at it than i am uh, but I assure you it does work, and uh, it's pretty great. And again, keep in mind for this game that builds are very flexible. If you have a different you know, build priority, if you find a build that works for you, by all means, please use it. I, I, I am 100% not telling you uh, how to play or you know, forcing you to play this way. Uh, I just think that these are two very optimal builds. But uh, again, thank you for watching. I will see you guys on the next one, and have a good day.